Hello everybody and welcome to my next video of the Tips and Clips collection that I'm doing this year. Tips and Clips is just a way of showing stuff that ordinarily wouldn't make a long enough video to make it a full subject on its own. And the little, little tips that I think are useful or little clips as I say that don't fit into other ones. And don't forget if you want to just underneath this video there's a row of icons like, dislike, um, and there's one with a little scissors icon called clips and if you want to you can click on that and a little box will open up with two blue borders on and you can move those borders independently left and right or you can move the whole clip along give it a name and then you can post that on your social media channels if you want to and that will help promote green side up it helps with the google analytics it helps me and eventually that will help you as the viewing subscriber here to the channel. And if you're not subscribed, big red button just down there. Right, let's get on with it. Sweet peas first. These are my sweet peas. And as somebody asked me the other day what variety they were, these are the Chelsea collection. There's about eight different varieties in there. And they are from Eagle Sweet Peas. I'll put a link in the description so you can go and find them. And yeah, these are just wonderful at the minute. You can see they're in full bloom. The smell is amazing. And they're my, fav my favourite because these are um, a Spencer type. I mean, they're lovely big and blousy, ruffled petals. And I'm going to pick all the flowers today, just drop them into a bucket with a little bit of water in, and they'll last very well till they get home and they'll last even longer in the vase because you've done that step. If you're in your own back garden, you can just pick a bunch and take them straight in the house. But what I aim for is to pick these twice a week and I want to pick all of them, except for flowers like these here, these ones. These are my next pickings flowers. So I'll leave those alone. Only the ones that are out in full bloom, such as this one here, this one here, there's, there's plenty on. Look at that, two flowers and it looks like that. That's just, <laughs> just absolutely stunning and they smell wonderful. I mean, very quickly you'll get a couple of vases off them. Now, as, as far as maintenance goes, there's a few things to watch for. Firstly, you've got to pick all your flowers twice a week and you've got to watch for these. And I've got a few on here to take off. These are the seed pods. Once the flowers are gone, this is what happens. And there's plenty on here that I need to remove. There's another smaller one. What happens is when the plant gets to this stage and once it's grown these seed pods on and the seeds, the plant thinks it's done its job for the year. It's grown up, it's flowered, it's set seed. The plant will then die and you'll get no more blooms. So it's important to go through the whole lot and remove as many of these as you can find, if not all of them. And look at your plants from different angles because it's surprising how easily these things can get missed, especially later in the season when it's so much bushy so pick all your flowers get rid of all these and you can feed them once a week with a good tomato food keep them watered and also keep them tied in as well little outgrowths like this and here, here i will tie in i'll leave some string up here ready for that and that's a tip i got from uh, zoe woodward over at swan swan cottage flowers to leave some string there ready to tie in so if you're walking past you can get it done. There you go, sweet peas, my short guide. Now today I've got a special green tipster for you and a lot of you will probably know her already and I will put the links to her channel underneath. But from the In the Garden with Eli and Kate, here's Eli. Hey Steve, top tip for you. It's awesome that we all get to grow all of our flowers, fruit, veg and stuff from seed every so often you might need to buy something at the garden centre, the plant nursery or whatever, or even online. If you buy from a reputable garden centre or nursery, you can pretty much guarantee those plants will be all nice and healthy. But anything that comes in a pot from one place to your garden might still have pests in it. So my top tip then is to always check what's inside the pot before you plant it out in your garden because the last thing you want is something like the vine weevil grub could be in there eating away all those little plant roots and you don't know it yet and then you introduce it into your garden top tip then 
check everything in there, check the soil, check the roots. And if you do find anything, squish it. Don't introduce that to your garden. See you, Steve. Now, that is a brilliant tip. Thank you, Eli. It's always worth bearing in mind these things because you can introduce pests and diseases to your garden if you're not careful when you're buying plants. On the whole, you're gonna have a good experience every time, but now and again, something does slip. We used to have nursery beds, and I still want to put one in here. And this was the idea of these two beds behind me when I put them in. That's what I wanted was a propagation bed and a nursery area so that new plants coming onto the plot could sit there for a year, grow on, or I could grow my seed, unseen grown plants in there to grow on. But one of the most nightmare things is buying sort of brassica plants, and there's a load of brassicas up there. There's radish and uh, the swede, and, and there's all kinds of things I can't quite remember now. Um, but that's one of the ones that I won't buy and fetch onto the, onto the plot if I can help it. It's a bra anything from the brassica family because you can introduce club root. Now, as I say, 99% of the time you're going to be fine, but it only takes that like 1% to let club root into your plot and then you've got it for a long, long time and you really don't want that. So also if somebody on the plot here offers me, do you want some of these cabbages, Steve? No, thanks, mate, I'll grow my own. Because as you can see, these have only been in a couple of weeks. Brassicas grow nice and easy, so there's no point really taking that risk and that danger. This also is a brassica and I had my hot box here and grew broccoli rob in it over the winter and stupidly i left the lid on it so i couldn't see it forgot about it it went to seed and that's what all these are in these seedlings here you can see i've got some fennel growing here and again this is the benefit of growing and sowing in rows if you grow in rows you can easily see where your plants are and just remove these weeds now these will all go these weeds will all go onto my bad compost at the back of the plot because as you can see here those of you who know your weeds I've got a bit of a cooch grass problem so, and rather than put that in my compost good compost heap they'll all go on my bad compost heap at the back of the plot so that's a look, quite a few tips for you there actually and thanks once again to Eli and all the links for her channel for Eli and Kate will be underneath in the description so I've also been asked about this, this radicchio, which is actually a, a chicory, a red treviso chicory. Uh, what my take on it was because they had made two sowings and nothing had come through. Well, I sowed these less than a week ago or about a week ago uh, for the July sowing video. And you can see they've come up and all I've done is put little furrows in some seed in, cover them over no more than a quarter of an inch deep and treated them and grown them as lettuce. And then in sometime this next week, they'll get pricked out into modules and they'll grow fine. If you're not getting germination in this warm weather right now, admittedly, I've been inside the polytunnel, but I don't think that would make much difference. They would germinate outside as well because the weather's just warm enough for it. Get yourself some fresh seed and best place, I reckon, Premier Seeds Direct, 99p a pack here, sorted. So that's it for today's edition of Tips and Clips. I hope you enjoyed that. We covered quite a few different subjects there, so I hope it was interesting enough for you to watch. Thanks again to Eli from In The Garden with Eli and Kate. The links to her channel are underneath in the description. Do go and have a look and see, see what they're up to in bonnie old Scotland. And I'll see you all very, very soon. Please stay safe, take care, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Tarana.